now that we know what statistics is, and we know the two different big types of statistics, we want to think about the process that's involved here, because it's an important process that we always want to kind of keep in the back of our mind as the course goes on. But before we get into that process, let's think about a few more definitions. So when we take statistics, we're taking them from a population. A population is a collection of all the elements, i.e. persons or objects, of interest in the study. So it can be people, but it could also be snowflakes, tires, tigers, whatever, you know, animals, it doesn't matter. Now an individual is anybody that is a member of that population. Any person that's in the population is an individual. So there's somebody that could have been selected. And a sample is any subset of the population. Now, subset means that it's um, less than or equal to the population. So technically, it could be the whole population, but we don't think of it that way. We think of it as a smaller group than the population. Now, in general, we are going to assume that our samples are good representatives of the population for the most part. Now, in real life research, that can actually be very difficult to do. It can sometimes be almost impossible to get a truly unbiased sample is what that's called. You want your samples to be unbiased, not biased. You want them to be fair and random and all that good stuff. But in actuality, that's really tricky to manage sometimes. But we're just going to always assume that it's true because if you don't have random and biased, you have bigger problems. You're going to basically not be able to do much of anything that we do in this course unless you have random and unbiased. So we assume that um, always, even though in real life research, that's not a fair assumption to make. Um, the sample, by the way, is the group you gather the information on. It's not the information yourself itself. It's the group you're gathering. So for example, let's say I'm interested in baseball for the heck of it. And the Tigers are my local team. So the Tigers are my sample. Now what their um, average runs per game is, what their average home runs, all that stuff, that's the statistics. But the Tigers themselves are the sample, right? So when you when you look at the sample, don't think of it, oh, it's the, the average home runs. No, 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 that's not, an av that's not a sample. The sample is the group. The statistics are the numbers you get from that group, okay? So just to be clear, that's a common confusion for people. All right, suppose we have a drug manufacturer that's interested in the proportion of persons who have hypertension, um, elevated blood pressure, whose condition can be controlled by the new drug the company has developed. A study involving 5,000 individuals with hypertension is conducted and has found that 80% of the individuals are able to control their drug with hypertension. So first thing they want us to do is state the population. So now I drew this kind of up here, and I, I forgot to mention this, but the population's in that blue box. It's kind of everybody kind of highlight this for you. So it's all the people. They're the population. All of them. All the little smiley faces. Now an individual is just any single person from that population. So in this case, it's the person that's in orange. They're the individual. Okay. Gotta make that bigger so you can see it. One second. There we go. I had to match the colors here. So an individual is kind of highlighted in this orangish color. So that's any one of these smiley faces. There's lots of individuals. So every single one of these smiley faces is their own individual. And a sample is a subset. So, so there they are in a ring. Now if we're looking at this, this is people with hypertension, high blood pressure. Okay. Now the study involves 5,000 individuals with hypertension. Okay, so that's the sample is the 5,000 individuals, but the population, it's a little unclear, but it would probably be all people with hypertension, maybe in the US or the world, something like that. Um, it wasn't really stated whether which country it was in. I mean, it could be France for all I know, but um, we could say in the world or US or everywhere, or whatever, something like that. Now, an individual be any single person with hypertension. Didn't have to be selected for the sample. So any person with hypertension at all. Okay. And then a sample, oop, hypertension. And then a sample was that group of people who participated. And there were 5,000 of them. Um, the symbol for that, by the way, is going to be N when we get to it. Um, N is the sample size symbol. There we go. So the sample was the group of people with hypertension who participated in the study. And there were N equals 5,000 of them. N is the symbol for sample size, lowercase n, for number. 
All right, so let's think about what they, they're doing here. They have a population. That's all the people with, well, let me back up. Before they even get that far, they'll want to design the study. So they'll say, okay, what do we want to figure out? We want to figure out whether this new drug is going to um, lower hypertension or help people control their hypertension. So we have a population that's all the people with hypertension. So that would be the blue box. Let me paste that in down there one second. There, and I even highlighted the ones above to keep it clear. So the blue part is the population made up of a whole bunch of, indi of individuals. Then from there we draw a sample. Now, if we're doing a good job of this, it'll be a nice, random, unbiased sample where everybody and every um, type of person is equally likely to be represented. So we pull that sample, a nice good sample. Then we collect and summarize data about that sample. So we um, give them the drug and see you know, are they able to control their hypertension or not? And from there, we get the sample statistics. That's the 80% part. So we figure, oh, 80% of this sample was able to control their hypertension. So that's the 80% comes from that sample. And then from there, we go to a population parameter. We say, okay, well, if 80% of the sample did okay, then we bet about 80% of the population will do okay. And therefore, we should put the drug on the market. And that's where you draw the conclusion. So let me talk through that again. So you take your population, your large group, you pull a sample from them, then you collect and summarize data on them. So you give them the drug, you see how they do, et cetera. Then you figure out what percentage of that sample, what, what was the average of that sample, what was the whatever from that sample, pie charts, bar charts, all that good stuff. That's all sample statistics from that group, from that sample. So you're getting numbers about that sample. And then you infer from there about the whole population. You say, well, if 80% of the sample did okay, then we guess about 80% of the population will do okay. And that's the population parameter piece. And then from there, the um, FDA decides to put the drug on the market. That's when they're drawing conclusions on that. Let's think about sports. So you have your population, let's say, of all baseball players. You take a sample of baseball players and you, you know, look at their numbers for their games. You look at their health. You look at their whatever. And you figure, oh, you know, okay, this person, these people have, you know, I don't know, 22% um, batting average. Well, then I'm going to infer from there that they're going to have 22% batting average for me on my team. Therefore, I'm going to draw the conclusion that I should trade for them, things like that, or draft them as the case might be, depending on which sport you're talking about, right? So it's all the same process. Now, if this process sounds familiar, that's because it's the same process that's used in laboratory sciences. So when we um, take a population and we draw a sample from it, and then you run a lab on it, you know, that's what lab classes do. And then you infer, hey, how it worked in my beaker is how it's going to work all the time. And therefore, I draw the conclusion that this rule of physics or chemistry or whatever is true. Right. So you're taking that lab data, which is the sample statistics, and you're inferring about how the population of all beakers like you have or all um electron spectron microscopes are going to work like yours does, etc. And that is the process of statistics.